the fragrance of selfless love that has drawn the world into one family the truth of an eternal message that has been revealed through every act and word the fulfillment in service that has been taught by relentless sacrifice the lord's own life is indeed his message sai ram and greetings from the chancellor's chamber in the administrative block of the shri satyasai institute of higher learning Welcome to the 16th episode of our month long series entitled The Message of the Lord. Currently, we are dealing with what Swami has taught us about education through his discourses and via his own life through the various examples that he has set. Yesterday, we discussed something about how Baba set up an entire university and shaped it both in terms of policies and guiding principles. by the constant personal attention that he gave to students in many different ways the personal attention aspect is extremely important and today we shall explore why baba was insistent on that every university has what is called the vice chancellor who essentially functions as the ceo about the vice chancellor is the chancellor who mostly functions as a ceremonial head showing up once in a while mainly at the time of the annual convocation thus most chancellors have zero contact with the students of their universities by contrast swami who is the founder of the shri satya sai university and also its revered chancellor for life is there amongst the students every single day As Baba often says, while vice chancellors come and go, Swami always continues. Swami has made it an important point to be among students as much as possible, mainly to help them shape their character and to sensitize them to their responsibilities to society. Again and again he says, You owe everything to society and therefore your foremost duty must also be to society. Swami gives a clear and important reason for why duty to society is most essential. He says, As I have told you often, God is in every single person. Now, what is society? It is just the macro of the individual. If God is in an individual, is not got present in the society as well how therefore can you say that you love swami but remain indifferent to society if you do that it only means that you're not bothered about my teachings swami gives an analogy to make his point even clearer he says your body is made up of cells there are many different kinds of cells and in each variety there are billions and billions The cells make up various organs and different organs combine to form different systems. Each system has its own job to do. The respiratory system, for example, supplies oxygen to the body and takes away the carbon dioxide produced inside. In short, every cell in the body works for the body as a whole. And what does the body do? It takes care of every cell. How? Well, every cell needs oxygen. It is through the process of breathing that the body provides the oxygen. Every cell needs water. It is by drinking water that the body provides every cell its quota of water, and so on. So you see, there is a symbiotic relationship between the micro or the cell and the macro or the body. Without the body, where would be the cell? So. 
there is a similar relationship between the individual and society. People do not understand or appreciate this, even though Swami has explained all this any number of times. Even a prominent person such as Bill Gates, the founder of the famous Microsoft Corporation, has stressed that he would have been nowhere but for society. Bill Gates has said again and again that his company has been able to grow because of society. I left Harvard with no real awareness of the awful inequities in the world, the appalling disparities of health and wealth and opportunity that condemn millions of people to lives of despair. I learned a lot here at Harvard about new ideas in economics and politics. I got great exposure to the advances being made in the sciences. But humanity's greatest advances are not in its discoveries, but in how those discoveries are applied to reduce inequity. He says, that Microsoft would not have been able to recruit so many engineers from so many countries but for schools, colleges and teachers. Who provides them all? Society, says Bill Gates. Similarly, Microsoft engineers are all the time traveling either by road or air. Who provides roads and airports? Society again. And who gives Bill Gates all his business? Society again. Do you think Microsoft can do thriving business in the Sahara Desert or in Antarctica? No wonder then that Bill Gates has been very active in supporting society in many different ways. Swami has been stressing precisely that point and indeed much more, especially by giving his advice about duty to society a strong spiritual basis. And just think for how so long he's been doing that. Yet, how many pay serious attention to what he's been saying? Nevertheless, Swami never stops exhorting his students to serve society. Again and again, he says, you are born to serve. That is your first duty. Getting back to the body, you know what happens if the cells in a body do not cooperate and misbehave, don't you? The state is nothing but cancer. Yes, cancer. As everyone knows, cancer is absolutely dangerous. Like a body, society also can fail. And these days, Somalia is often cited as the number one example of a failed state. We do not wish to scare you with horrible stories about Somalia, but just imagine what happens during, say, a simple truck strike when all movement of essential goods are stopped. The shops become empty and it becomes difficult to buy even vegetables and milk. Now imagine when an entire country comes to a stop because there is no police force, no statewide financial system, no central bank, no educational system that regulates universities and accredits them, no postal service, no sewage service and so on. Can you imagine what that would be like? There would be utter chaos and such a country is called a failed state. Today while Somalia is known to be a failed state, many others are not far from that situation. 
So you see, individuals cannot afford to be indifferent to the society and the country in which they live. They have both duties and responsibilities in this context. In 1999, in a public meeting in Mumbai, Swami told the huge audience that Mumbai was the stomach of India. As you well know, if the stomach is sick, the whole body suffers. Swami said that Bombay was suffering because the rich there lived in comfortable skyscrapers least bothered about people who supported them but lived in slums in the most miserable conditions. This, Swami said, is the perfect recipe for disaster. People of Bombay were asking Swami to protect them from danger due to crime, but were not bothered about protecting the poor who served them. Take care of those who serve you, Swami said, and you would automatically be protected. Yes, as the scriptures declare, he who protects dharma would receive protection from that same dharma. Dharma is God and God lives in society. So, must we not protect the society instead of abandoning it? Cities are important and they always receive a lot of attention. But for Swami, India always meant villages. Thus, in May 1985, the year of his 60th birthday, Swami made a special trip to a small village called Amagundapalayam, just about 25 kilometers by road from Puttaparthi. Even today, when millions come to Puttaparthi, very few know about this village, even though it is only a short distance away. Why? Because going there is so difficult. And yet, Swami went there in 1985 in his car. How did he manage that? Because his students prepared that road by working there for many weeks. Now, why did Swami go there taking his students along? He went there not merely to encourage the villagers or to install some idols or even to give a discourse. He went there mainly to tell his students that villages are like his eyes. His message was simple. If you say you love Swami, then protect Swami's eyes. Swami has not two eyes, but thousands of them. Are you ready to protect and care for a thousand eyes? That was the challenge that Swami threw then to his students. In the year 2000, Swami converted the challenge into an opportunity by instituting what has now become famous as the annual Grama Seva activity. Basically, it involves all the students visiting about a hundred villages in the neighborhood over a period of 10 days. They go to these villages taking Swami's love to the people living there and distribute food, sweets and clothes literally door to door. It is an amazing operation and involves everyone, students as well as teachers. It all starts with an all-night cooking and packing. Early in the morning, the packets are duly loaded into waiting trucks. The students then rush to have a quick path and darshan of their beloved Swami. After that, they get into the waiting trucks and off they go. When they reach a village, the very first thing they do is go around singing bhajans. Basically, 
This routine is a message to the villagers to start the day with God. Once the Nagar Sankirtan routine is over, distribution begins in all earnestness. This is done with great thoroughness and every effort is made to ensure that no one is missed. In every house, the students get to see how much the people love Swami and with what enthusiasm they receive Swami's blessings. Sometimes the unspoken gratitude of the recipient is most touching. While going around the villages, the students also see how different villages are compared to the cities where so many facilities are available and one can easily take them for granted. In a village, shops are few and have hardly anything. If there is a school, it is at best an elementary school with rudimentary facilities. There is seldom a doctor and in most villages there is not even a midwife who can deliver babies. Over 10 days of such exposure, students quietly realize that behind the India that they are familiar with lies another India which is very different. And yet, if this other layer were not there, affluent India would not be able to eat. Because it is rural India that feeds urban India. Slowly, it begins to dawn on students that someone unseen slogs day and night so that what they take for granted is easily available. Yet, those people who support the lifestyle of the middle and the upper class themselves do not get the benefits that those they support have ready access to. Drinking water is a problem. School is a problem, sanitation is a problem, house is a problem. For the have-nots, everything is lacking except, of course, problems. Okay, Baba gives the students free education, he trains them well, he loves them and spends quality time with them. But what happens when they leave the portals of this university? Good question. And here is the answer from a person coming from the corporate sector who used to recruit MBA graduates from Baba's university to work in his firm. That clearly shows that loyalty factor is high. Uh, they do not jump for money. They are willing to look at a long-term perspective and a long-term career in the organization. And that's beneficial for both the students and the organization. So really, that is, that is the primary factor which actually distinguishes them. Uh, of course, on performance, the students have shown that they are substantially superior to the, the average group. Uh, we have a rating system of 1 to 4, where 1 and 2 are really the outstanding and the very good performers. Uh, 3 and 4 are the average and the uh, non-satisfactory performers. On an average, about 50% of the employees fall in the 1 and 2 category. But in the case of students from the Satyasai Institute, we have seen that ratio is as high as 85%. Uh, a difference that I have seen in Swami's boys is that uh, the purpose behind them coming in money is secondary, really. And, and we have seen this, and this is proven by the fact that the loyalty factor, the attrition rates, if we compare in the organization of Swami's boys vis-a-vis, the others, other employees, the, the other employees, there is a vast difference. The, the level of performance is, is uh, substantially higher. Uh, also, the students are willing, the boys are willing to do whatever is assigned to them. And I think that makes a big difference to the organization. After the boys from the Satyasa Institute have joined us, uh, the organization is now started looking at social initiatives just the way that the boys have been taught in Prashanti Nilam. Uh, in the form of uh, service in the village, Gram Seva, education. And I must quote that the senior management in HDFC Bank, all of them have tremendous words of praises for the work done by uh, Swami. And uh, 
that is actually also by seeing the work that is being put in by the boys of the institute when they take up projects for the for the bank almost 10% of our workforce comprises of alumni from shri satyasai university these are students who hit the ground running and are able to do various roles straddle different job responsibilities without having to undergo too much of induction and training the ease with which they adapt to the working environment the ease with which they integrate with the culture of the company and the office is something that is absolutely remarkable swami students work professionally as a service as against pursuing a professional ambition so versatility adaptability and service orientation are three things that make the students of sri satyasai university unique not just in india but among the global workforce it is not just that swami's boys are good disciplined employees ahead of their personal ambitions they keep alive what they have learned from swami in other ways too yuk banking ee business deeni yokka sambandha mai unde yokka communication kodu chaala sakramanga untundali workers dekku ee vidhanga maatadali bankers dekku ee vidhanga untundali mana shareholders dekku ee vidhanga untundali ani aneetundi chaala chakkaga ee oka dani koti communication sariyani puttiga untundali ee anintiki ni mukhyanga pranadharamaina kuntidi neeti vijay manu prarthana cheyina manam lakshyam pettakunda సక్రమమైనటువంటి రీతిగా సమాజములకు పదార్థం అందించేటువంటి విధానాన్ని మనం లక్ష్యంలో పెట్టుకోవాలి one of those being to do seva or service whenever possible here for example you see them running a medical camp in a village here is a moving shot of a former student of swami serving in a medical unit set up in nigeria exclusively for helping those stuck with the dreaded disease leprosy Dear viewer, you may not be aware of it, but at the present time, India has about 400 universities. How many such students do you think the other universities produce regularly? These are times when good work is not considered news, and hence simply not reported. And since Baba does not speak much about this in public, till now the world at large was not even aware of the wonderful manner. in which swami has made character development the cornerstone of his educational program however thanks to the increasing number of sai students serving in major corporations the elite of india are beginning to pay attention to what is happening in prashantinilayam at least as far as education is concerned lord has given in the human frame everything you have got to Thus, for example, when the University Grant Commission celebrated its Golden Jubilee some years ago, it made Puttaparthi the venue for its special seminar on value-based education. Likewise, recently, when the leaders of banking sector wanted to discuss how to introduce value-based reforms into the financial sector following the economic collapse of 2008, they came to Swami's University to find out how to go about it. This is for the first time that a university anywhere in the world has called a conference to go into the issues that have been raised uh, following the crisis the financial crisis that the world saw over the last two years it could be only his foresight that could have made the sai university think of the challenge to two pillars which i think baba holds very dear one of truth the other one of dharma because i think these two pillars were under challenge and the whole genesis of this uh, crisis that we have seen in the global context the arose from the challenge to these two pillars of i would say dharma and uh, satya to wrap it all up There is far more to education than merely having a great campus, excellent buildings, distinguished faculty and top class facilities. If at the end of the day all this leads merely to clever devils as a leading educationist put it, 
then the entire effort is a waste. And just look at the recent market crash in America. Meltdown. The American financial system is rocked to its foundation. The giant bank crumbles, stocks plummet. Nightmare on Wall Street. AIG fights for its life. Blood on the floor. Armageddon. A category five. Do you think there was a shortage of talent in Wall Street? Wall Street crashed and brought large parts of the world down along with it because of only one reason, and that is total lack of integrity. It destroys the rest of the dam. Pause for a moment and ask yourself whether you know any chancellor of any university in any country anywhere in the world who for decades has spent so much quality time with students, who knows the names of so many students even 10 or 20 years after they leave, who has helped not only the students but also their parents and given so much love for so long non-stop. viewer as we conclude this episode we would like you to think on how rare it is when God comes down to earth in a human form and how blessed we are that we are able to see him and also learn from him that is all we have for this episode but kindly do join us tomorrow for the next episode in continuation of this series Jai Sairam